He is known for being a prominent Italian philosopher and theologian. He is recognized for serving as the master of the order of preachers. He is Thomas Cajetan. In the bustling streets of Italy, a young Thomas Cajetan embarked on a journey of knowledge and faith. Born into a family of scholars and theologians, he showed an insatiable thirst for learning from a tender age. Encouraged by his parents, he delved into the depths of philosophy and art, mastering different schools of thought that nurtured his open-mindedness. As Thomas grew older, his intellectual prowess caught the attention of the Catholic Church. He ascended to become the master of the Order of Preachers, a position that bestowed upon him great influence and respect. However, it was his role as the Pope's legate in Augsburg that would define his legacy. During the tumultuous era of the Protestant Reformation, Thomas Cajetan emerged as a prominent theologian, fervently opposing the teachings of Martin Luther. His eloquence and unwavering commitment to Catholicism made him the Church's spokesperson in the face of this religious upheaval. With his sharp intellect and persuasive arguments, he fought to defend the traditions and doctrines of the Catholic faith. Thomas Cajetan's contribution extended beyond his role as a theologian. He also left a lasting imprint through his extensive commentary on the Summa Theologica of Thomas Aquinas, a revered work in Catholic philosophy. His interpretations and insights into Aquinas' teachings became essential references for future generations of scholars. Today, Thomas Cajetan's name may be overshadowed by the legacy of his contemporary, Saint Cajetan, the founder of the Theatines. However, his impact on Catholic opposition to the Protestant Reformation remains undeniable. He stood as a guardian of the Church's doctrines, embodying the essence of intellectual pursuit and unwavering faith. Thomas Cajetan, born Jacopo Vio in Gaeta, was a man deeply devoted to the study of philosophy and theology. From a young age, he immersed himself in the teachings of St. Thomas Aquinas, eventually becoming a renowned doctor of theology and professor of metaphysics. It was through his sharp intellect and passion for understanding that Cajetan would leave a lasting impact on the world. One of Cajetan's defining moments came during a public disputation at Ferrara, where he engaged in a debate with the esteemed philosopher Pico della Mirandola. This encounter solidified his reputation as a theologian, showcasing his ability to articulate complex ideas and defend his beliefs. Cajetan's unwavering dedication to the papal rights became evident when he confronted the 1511 Council of Pisa. Through a series of works, he vehemently defended the authority of the Pope, even though his writings were later condemned by the Sorbonne and publicly burned by King Louis XII. Despite the backlash, Cajetan's efforts were not in vain, as he was granted the bishopric of Gaeta as a result. In 1517, Pope Leo X recognized Cajetan's contributions by making him a cardinal and archbishop of Palermo. Cajetan's support for the Pope against the claims of the Council of Pisa showcased his unwavering loyalty to the papal authority. He wrote extensively in defense of his position, engaging in intellectual exchanges with scholars like Jacques Almain. Cajetan's determination to uphold the superiority of papal authority over that of councils helped shape the decisions of the Fifth Lateran Council. Cajetan's influence extended beyond theological debates. In 1518, he was chosen as a legate to the Diet of Augsburg, where he was tasked with examining the teachings of Martin Luther. This role allowed him to engage in critical analysis and testing of Luther's ideas, contributing to the ongoing religious discourse of the time. Thomas Cajetan's life and philosophy teach us the value of intellectual rigor and unwavering dedication to one's beliefs. His commitment to defending the papal rights and upholding the authority of the Church serves as a reminder that in the face of dissent, it is essential to stand firm in our convictions. Cajetan's story exemplifies the power of knowledge and the importance of engaging in thoughtful dialogue to shape our understanding of the world. Thomas Cajetan, a philosopher and theologian of his time, was known for his unwavering dedication to his faith and his deep understanding of scholastic philosophy. Born as Tommaso de Vio, Cajetan was a man of austere piety and fervent zeal, setting him apart from the majority of Italian cardinals of his day. He firmly believed in the supreme necessity of maintaining ecclesiastical discipline and staunchly defended the rights of the papacy. According to Cajetan, the Pope should be seen as, the mirror of God on earth, reflecting divine authority and guidance. Cajetan's intellectual pursuits were not confined to theology alone. He delved into the field of Thomistic philosophy, showing a remarkable independence of judgment. He embraced liberal views on marriage and divorce, challenging traditional beliefs. He even questioned the existence of a material hell, advocating for a more compassionate interpretation. Cajetan's progressive ideas were not without controversy, as some Dominicans saw them as too independent from the teachings of St. Thomas Aquinas. Despite his liberal views, Cajetan remained a steadfast opponent of the Reformation. He wrote several works directly addressing Martin Luther's ideas and played a crucial role in shaping the papal delegates' policies in Germany. 
Kajitan recognized that to effectively counter the reformers, he needed a deeper knowledge of the scriptures. With characteristic zeal, he dedicated himself to the study of the Bible. He wrote commentaries on a significant portion of both the Old and New Testaments, providing critical analysis and departing from literal interpretations when necessary. Kajitan's commitment to his faith extended beyond theological and philosophical debates. He offered opinions on practical matters, such as the disposition of plundered goods when their ownership was uncertain. Kajitan's dedication to understanding and interpreting scripture was evident in his careful translation of the Old and New Testaments, excluding only Solomon's Song, the Prophets, and the Revelation of St. John. Thomas Kajitan's philosophy and theological views continue to inspire and challenge us today. His emphasis on the importance of ecclesiastical discipline and the role of the papacy in reflecting divine authority prompts us to reflect on the nature of leadership and the pursuit of moral virtue. Kajitan's fearless exploration of scriptural texts encourages us to approach religion and spirituality with an open mind, questioning traditional interpretations and seeking deeper understanding. His legacy reminds us of the power of intellectual curiosity and the value of engaging in meaningful dialogue to shape our beliefs and navigate the complexities of faith in our daily lives. In the mid-20th century, a negative assessment of Kajitan's thought emerged among certain Catholic commentators. They portrayed Kajitan as the first person to make mistaken interpretations of the thought of Thomas Aquinas. One of these critics was Etienne Gilson, who argued that Kajitan broke the link between philosophy and Christianity. According to Gilson, Kajitan, influenced by Scotism, reduced Aquinas's metaphysics to an ontology of substance, focusing only on forms and essences of beings rather than their participation in the pure actuality of God. However, Henri de Lubac, in his work Cernatural, disagreed with Kajitan's interpretation. De Lubac believed that Kajitan treated Aquinas as an Aristotelian, construing human nature as a closed reality with its own intrinsic powers and goals. De Lubac argued that Aquinas was not an Aristotelian and that subsequent Catholic thought had misconstrued Aquinas's account of the relationship between nature and grace. In 2006, Ralph McInerney and other scholars challenged the negative assessment of Kajitan's work put forth by Lubac and Gilson. They argued that the criticisms of Kajitan were not supported by evidence from his works. Furthermore, McInerney asserted that it was actually Gilson whose interpretation of Aquinas departed from the latter's own beliefs. This reassessment of Kajitan's philosophy highlights the ongoing debate within Catholic thought regarding the interpretation of Aquinas. It underscores the importance of carefully examining the original works and understanding the context in which they were written. By doing so, we can gain a deeper understanding of Aquinas's ideas and their relevance to our daily lives. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.